好，接下来是我们的团体英语即席演讲比赛第十三队，请上台。计时开始。Human rights are inherent to all human beings, regardless of race, sex, nationality, or any other status. Human rights diplomacy is defined as the negotiation and advocating process associated with the promotion and protection of international human rights. However, as the younger generation in Taiwan, can we contribute to such a monumental issue, human rights? Honorable judges, dear participants, good morning. Ta Taiwan legalized same-sex marriage in 2019 and set up a National Human Rights Commission in 2020, becoming a human rights leader in Asia. However, there are still millions of people around the world suffer from a lack of medical assistance, struggle with deadly food disease, and are put into jail without due process. I believe even as teenagers from an oft-overlooked nation, we can still make changes and promote human rights diplomacy. In recent years, an event on the international scene called Rights for Rights made its appearance. I wrote a letter to a political prisoner in the Philippines who was sent to jail just because of a Facebook post. Born in a free country, I couldn't stand seeing people be incriminated for just stating their points of view. When the international letters arrive in huge numbers, they force governments to act and release political prisoners. Although letters are short, they can bring hope to the people in the direst of situations. We can accomplish even more than this. We can go beyond rights for rights. To the government in some countries, Human rights are only about people's speech freedom. However, it may violate the most basic human right, the right to live. Millions of Africans are exposed to the danger of sand fleas. Sand fleas, a kind of pest, is very common in Africa. They live in the land and hide in the sand. If someone walks past them without wearing shoes, the fleas will parasitize the victim's food. The disease they cause affects millions of Africans every year. Therefore, their basic human right, the right to live, is being threatened. Oh Shoes Save Lives is a charity about donating shoes to African countries. The charity protects not only their bodies, but also their right to life. When I first heard, when I first heard of this charity, I was excited to help. My family and all my friends also joined this charity. The action started with me only, but reached out to many more people in the end. Apart from this example, I also believe another way to promote human rights diplomacy. Since April, Taiwan has donated over 50 million medical masks. Under the pandemic, masks become the whole world's primary demand. When people are in lack with the supplies, which is linked to their own health and survival, their human rights are in jeopardy. In order to show our sincerity and enthusiasm, Taiwan's government supports the exchange of frontline medical personnel in more than 80 heavily impacted countries, such as the United States and Japan. After Disease Management Agency Commander announced the launch of the Protect Taiwan Help the World campaign on March 27th, I donated my quota of masks to the international community by simply using the Healthcare Action Express app. When I pressed the I Do button in the app, I realized that thanks to our sound health insurance system, Taiwan can promote this precious value to the world too. Although Taiwan is not currently a member of the United Nations, we still make contribution and help actively in the international community. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has set up a working group in order to promote international diplomacy and also focus on the international human rights issue. Back to us, as part of Taiwan, we can also do our part for the world too. By writing letters, 
we can prevent people from being treated unfairly. By donating masks to other countries, we can help those people gain basic medical demands. By giving away our shoes, we can help Africans avoid disease. Taiwan can definitely be a strong voice in protecting human rights around the globe. We can't change the world alone, but together, we can make a difference. Thank you. 好，谢谢第十三组，请回座休息。我们请第十四队做准备。好的，请第十四队上台。计时开始。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It was the International Human Rights Day that was celebrated worldwide two days ago, on December 10th. On the very same day in 1948, Universal Declaration of Human Rights was proposed by United Nations. Which was a great step of the enhance of the protection and guarantee of human rights. However, there's still a lot of people who don't have the human rights that they should possess. Therefore, to stand up for those whose human rights was deprived, I know it's time to take action. But how? Now. I'm going to invite my teammate Catherine to share her story. Thank you, Andrew. I have participated in Right for Right for two years. The campaign is led by Amnesty International, a non-governmental organization to promote human rights. In order to help those peoples whose freedoms are at risk, I write letters to the authorities. Telling them the world needs intermediate actions to eliminate injustice. During the campaign, I realized with my tiny act, I can make the world a better place. We, the young generations, use our words to promote human rights diplomacy. I believe with our efforts, Taiwan can definitely impact the world. Now let's invite Shelley to tell us more. Shelley, thank you, Catherine. Nowadays, Taiwan continues to strengthen human rights. LGBTs can have freedom of assembly and association. After a long effort, on May 17, 2019, Taiwan became the first country in Asia to adopt same-sex marriage. In fact. Human rights diplomacy is practiced around us. As a teenager, we can gather together to build non-government organizations. Except for writing for rights, there are more ways to promote human rights, such as shooting videos, writing articles, or even joining volunteers. For Taiwan, respect for human rights and democracy is the secret. For maintaining close relationship with strong domestic nations, those who value democracy, human rights, and political freedom can come to Taiwan and enjoy the freedom. Next, let's invite Nancy to tell us more. Nancy, please. Thanks, Shelley. Nowadays, there's no denying that human rights is a popular issue in the world. And it is essential for everyone to possess. Michael Jordan once said, "Every one of us must work together to ensure justice for all." The meaning of setting International Human Rights Day is to emphasize the human rights. People have to fight actively for their human rights in order to enhance the human rights. We, 
the young generation can take advantage of writing postcards and having demonstration. Back to Taiwan, we have to be fortunate that we live in a democratic country where we have rights to have demonstration, same-sex marriage, and so on. Taiwan's democracy makes it an attractive place for freedom-loving people. Because living in a country where people have rights, we can totally understand the value of human rights. As long as we continue to work hard and use Taiwan's democracy and freedom, we can continue to promote human rights diplomacy. And we will change our future! Thank you. 好，感谢我们第十四队的表现，请回座休息。我们请下一队做准备。好，第十五队，请上台。计时开始。Unprecedented. When it comes to 2020, it's a word many people think of. While people were still in excitement celebrating the beginning of 2020, given hopes on New Year resolution, the whole world changed overnight because of COVID-19. Good morning, honorable judges, ladies, and gentlemen. Due to the virus's highly infectious nature and our proximity to its origin, all the preventive measures Taiwan takes have been universally recognized as Taiwan model. Besides our efforts in fighting the pandemic, we, Taiwan, still possess other advantages to shine on the global stage. Thank you, Kelly. Human rights are rights a person is inherently entitled, regardless of age, gender, or any other, or any other status. The UN General Assembly proposed 17 sustainable development goals to envision a better future. Among them, quality education and climate action catch our attention. According to UN, human rights cannot be enjoyed without safe, clean, and healthy environment. And Kofi Annan, Nobel Peace Prize winner, once said that education is a human right with immense power to transform. We will thus focus on these two aspects. Later, Joyce and Eva will elaborate more on youngsters' efforts of promoting environmental and educational diplomacy. Controversial as Great House Number is, her action indeed raised people's awareness on climate issue. A group of passionate Taiwanese teenagers have endeavored to promote our environmental rights since 2008. By founding Taiwan Youth Climate Coalition, or TWYCC, active and ambitious. The members in TWYCC have participated in conferences for youth or coins on the UNFCCC for over 10 years. They share their creative idea with NGO allies, using youth power to enhance exchange of experiences, encouraging youth movements. Last year, in Spain, the delegates from Taiwan cooperated with representatives from Japan, Malaysia, and South Korea to voice the urgent need to solve climate issue. Although Taiwan is not an official member in the United Nations, through the efforts from youngsters, we can still implement an official power to promote our environmental right diplomacy. Taiwanese youth spares no effort to promote educational diplomacy as well. Call of Riches, an association funded by Taiwanese teenagers, Zi Jun Ling and Wang Ting Tai, brings hopes and changes to the students in Nepal we were stricken by a destructive earthquake in 2015. Schools and homes were in ruins, and children lost opportunities to learn. With the vision to make learning accessible, the two youngsters initiated a fundraising project to college students in Taiwan. In half a year, 
the team was able to send 14 Nepali students back to school. And they never cease helping. There are four main domains in their project. First, raise education funds for students who can't afford tuition. Second, increase children's learning motivation. Third, allocate education resources properly. Last but not least, encourage parents to support education. By the efforts, the dropping out rate in Nepal greatly reduced from 42% to 2% in three years. The Taiwanese plant hopeful seeds in Nepalese children by manifesting the significance of educational rights, promoting diplomacy. Actions by governments and non-governmental organizations have been taken to facilitate human rights in all aspects. And we youngsters should have the responsibilities too. Resilient and united. We embody the virtue of teamwork. Daunting as the pandemic is, we face fears together and thereby generate more courage. Teenagers in TWYCC contribute to environmental issue as well. Mr. Ling and Ms. Tsai use the power of youth to embody the virtue of education. Both their works considerably promote human rights diplomacy. No one should be left behind on a long walk to the realization of human rights. Solidarity is the only way to connect with the world. Thank you for your attention. 好，谢谢对我们十五队，请回座休息。我们请下一队做准备。好，我们请第十六队上台。计时开始。Good morning, honourable judges. With advances in access to the internet, particularly through the internet. The public has many opportunities to get informed about issues around the globe and even get involved with them. One subject that the public has been able to gain more awareness of is human rights and the frequent abuses of those rights. As it is important for us to understand why human rights are important and that our governments have power and influence to negotiate, bargain, and advocate for the promotion and protection of those rights. These actions are what we call human rights diplomacy. Human rights are vital to all of us, and we need to reflect on these as we combat our human rights abuses. As human, we hope to live in a clean, safe, and healthy environment have access to the resources that we can survive and have the freedom to make choices about how to live in a dignified manner. Our rights were not handed to us freely. As a matter of fact, our rights we have are often the result of sacrifice that other people around the world before us have made. There are many human rights abuses in the world. One such problem is violence against women. While this issue is it everywhere, it is especially common in countries where there is a war. Many survivors of military conflicts are forced to flee their homes and sent to displaced common camps. In these camps, many women are subjected to sexual violence and rape. Many more also die due to lack of food, water, and health care. One specific example, which many Taiwanese are familiar with, a large peaceful protest in Hong Kong, and many and the human rights abuses we are happening there. With all of these abuses happening in the world, many concerned citizens are trying to do their part to stop them. Some actions include doing volunteer work to assist human rights victims, reporting human rights 
victims to proper authorities, and contacting with government representatives to encourage them to get involved. As governments have more power than individuals, they can be effective instruments in the battle against the human rights. One way that governments can promote human rights is through international agreements. such as Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The agreements that involve international law and therefore on the social behavior in many countries. It is clear that the human rights struggle has existed since the beginning of civilization and will not be eliminated anytime soon. However, there are things that we, the people, and our governments can do to help. Through being proactive and committed to the rights of all people, we can help to improve the lives of many people around the world. After all, as the late John F. Kennedy said, the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. Thank you. 好，谢谢我们第十六队，请回座休息。接下来请下一队做准备。好，第十七队，请上台。Taiwan is for us a heaven, always shining in the spotlight. On the rubber judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A few months ago, inspired by a group of senior Taiwanese college students, my teammates and I have started to make our own sanitary pads for women in Kenya. Since women and girls in Kenya do not enjoy the health care and women's rights they deserve. We hope that our contributions can change their lives a little bit at a time. This led me to think that, in addition to this, what else we Taiwanese can do to improve the lives of women across the globe, and further, to implement our human rights diplomacy. Nikki, can you tell us more? Sure, Jenny. In some disadvantaged regions, Women and girls are subject to uneven access to education, forced labor, and inadequate access to health care. Under the circumstances, Taiwan's promotion of women's rights by means of human rights diplomacy can be quite effective. Human rights diplomacy, according to the Institutes for Cultural Diplomacy, involves diplomatic interactions and that's the protection of human rights. Concerned with gender inequality, Taiwanese youth and NGOs have devoted themselves to enhancing women's rights by ensuring that children receive basic schooling, encouraging women's entrepreneurship, and providing proper health care. Taiwan's efforts not only help encourage our diplomatic friendships, but also augment Taiwan's international image. Today, my teammates, Amy and Coco, We'll introduce how Taiwan promotes women's rights diplomatically within other countries. Amy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nikki. In some disadvantaged countries, many girls are forced to give up the chance to study due to poverty. Therefore, NGOs in Taiwan are helping to improve their rights. For instance, 
World Vision has started a program called 1,000 Girls, which has been working on helping girls from poor families to receive an education. Also, it provides training programs for young girls to learn specific skills so that they can work, giving them the opportunity to break out of the cycle of poverty. Another example is the International Cooperation and Development Fund, which has had workshops on women's enterprise startups. Successful women share their experiences in counseling female entrepreneurship in order to cultivate talented women in Southeast Asian countries. This has helped to promote women's economic participation. To sum up, Taiwanese youth are capable of helping to improve women's rights to education and work. Coco, what do you think? Thank you, Wemi. To address the issue of the lack of gender equality in several countries in the world, achieving good health care might be another main action to help improve women's rights. On account of the gender-based discrimination in India, the One Country, One Center plan proposed by Taiwan's government has promoted the Gender Inequality Index and Sustainable Developed Goals. This plan aims to help female Indians receive proper medical resources by providing gender sensitivity courses to medical personnel. Second, the Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund ICDF has recently promoted the Taiwan Medical Program in Tuvalu, which provided regular cervical smear screening tests and advice on female hygiene. These actions can lay the foundation for great collaboration between Taiwanese and the foreign hospitals to create a women-friendly environment. Jenny, what's our conclusion? Thank you, teammates. The former first lady of the U.S., Hillary Clinton, once said, human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. To promote human rights diplomacy, Taiwan has put a great deal of effort in promoting women's rights. There are NGOs helping girls get access to education and encouraging women's economic participation. In addition, the Taiwan government has provided great health care services for Indian women. We, for teenage girls from Taiwan, believe that through the human rights diplomacy we have implemented, a better future is inevitable for all. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your kind attention. 好,我们谢谢第17队的表现,请回座休息。现在我们请下一组做准备。好,我们请第十八队上台。This is a high-tech era, overwhelmed by information. We're lucky that the former generations built up a stable base for rights and technology. With these advantages, we were able to grow under democracy. However, we as a young generation have to take action, for human rights are never given, rather earned. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How is human rights linked to education? Elvin? Thank you, Alice. We have a dream, a dream that we won't see people fooled, a dream that we won't see people blinded by the prevalence of false information. Education and rights that empower us to leave poverty and have the opportunity to fully participate in society. In this digital era, Media literacy becomes one of the most vital ability to develop. As team diplomatic envoys, we get news, think of logic, and choose the right information. 
But we don't born with that ability. We learn from Taiwan's education system. And this flexible education system, we learn from trials, criti critical thinking, and make mistakes through failures. If we can spread the education, or co the education concept in the rural area in New South Wales policies country, we can effectively alleviate some things, such as Indonesian eating bats during the pandemic and disbelief the coronavirus of the exist. As advocates of education system and education rights, we can supply education system through practical actions. But how about the rights of freedom to choose? Fionn, this is your stage. Thank you, Elvin. We have a dream, a dream that we don't hear the people sing. Sing the song of a wealthy man. In Myanmar, Pine Fu Min is in prison after speaking out against the military for the common. In Taiwan, democracy entitles us the freedom to choose. We choose to allow temporary inconvenience for more long-term mobility. All for one, one for all is not just a slogan but a mindset that we all have for the benefit for everyone. In participation of a campaign, Right for Rights, we exhibit our compassion and indignation through words. We resort to words that carry messages of justice. We speak for the victims who never have a say. As a preacher of democracy, we aspire human rights for all human beings. Next, I will invite Steve to tell us more about human rights. Thank you, Fionn. We have a dream that one day we won't hear the people weep, humming the tunes of the voiced women. Hillary Clinton failed to shatter the highest, hardest glass ceiling. Inequalities in any forms are penetrating all over the world. In Taiwan, we have our first female president, Tsai Ing-wen, and also we are on top of the Gender Equality Index. Our grassroots online community, Golf Zero, invites civic participations, clarifies this information, and also urges fair employment. Besides the labor's rights and women's rights, through volunteering is another way to improve human rights. That year, a group from Taipei Medical University and Shijian University, consisting 14 students and teachers who hold empathy, visited Cambodia's rural areas to provide educational, medical, and sanitary facilities resources. They also built up the first hygiene water bucket in order to confirm that people there have clean water to use. Last but not least, they public, public brochures consisting treatments of symptoms. In our opinion, we can not only improve human rights through volunteering, we can also learn their culture in person. Next, I will invite Alice. She will conclude the speech for us. Thank you, Steve. I'm proud to say that we're a nation weaved up by literacy, equity, and true democracy. We carry hope and faith. We glow with honor and strength. At this time, while we are exporting our success to the world, our rights and democracy continues to shine with tremendous pride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
计时开始。Fellow students, honorable judges, good morning, good afternoon. As John F. Kennedy requested, what can we do for our country? We want to know what we can do for the world. We are Taiwan's youth, and we are gathered here today because we are good at doing our homework. So here's the new assignment, everyone. Let's find out what Taiwan is good at and offer it to the world. Let's acknowledge our shortcomings and strive for comprehension of how concepts interrelate. Let's synthesize a better international scenario. Shall we? Jim, show them. Sure, Alicia. Let's do it. I'm excited. Our picture of diplomacy is contemporary with the ideas that all matter is composed of four classical elements, earth, water, wind, and fire. Our vision of the next generation of Taiwanese diplomats encompasses earth, water, wind, and fire as a, a token of our contribution to a better world. And so, earth. When coronavirus struck, it was predicted that Taiwan would be hard hit. But Taiwan quickly safeguarded people in ways that respected the rights of each individual. Taiwan has worked hard to solidify its human rights foundation. And now, we've come a long way from the martial law, sexism, and racism of our early years. But it's not enough. We fellow students can do more. We celebrate Taiwan's success while pointing out there's still room for improvement. We care for people. The proof is gender equality rights, a first-class healthcare system, and a school system fostering cultural diversity. No one is left behind. Nobody has to be forgotten. Applying this principle, Vita and her friend Zhou Kaixing have been active members of the Society of Wilderness. They have had the chance to stay in Malaysia and help the Penan tribe survive deforestation and massive cultural changes. Angela, I think it's time to explore the deep waters the world is in and how these waters may purify us. With great pleasure. 500 years of interaction with flourishing civilization have taught us how to deal with any possible scenario. We are able to communicate, negotiate, stand our ground and open our arms to other culture. These skills are the water that nurtures our ideas. Pretty handy skills when dealing with the pandemic. Taiwan is helping, but Taiwan's human rights standards did not develop overnight. Over the past 20 years, Taiwan has blossomed into a dynamic, multi-party democracy. In 2016, President Tsai represented ROC to apologize to indigenous people for previous and ongoing racism and discrimination. We should focus on modeling the value of human rights to help our southern allies cleanse things of discrimination. Our primary focus at school is to nurture open-mindedness. Pupils, like green sprouts, need to be irrigated with generous exposure to diversity. Following the 108 curriculum, we're dealing the stigma on students suffering from mood disorders. We should focus, then investigate. I have said enough. Time to change. Visa, go ahead. You got it, Angela. It's time to change. This year, Town is an island of courage at the crossroad of fear and change. Our ocean has taught us the power of the wind. We can read the winds of change, anticipate their shift, and so are open to change and not afraid to do the right thing, even if it's unpopular. And look, we were the first country in Asia to legalize gay marriage because we knew it was the right thing to do. A Taiwanese government's ban on the exports of medical face masks back in January was controversial. But global shortages show that it was the right thing to do. We have learned lessons from the SARS epidemic and can now provide effective advice to the global health community. In 2019, we participated in Amnesty International's Right for Rice Marathon. Alicia wrote her letter to Yasmin Ariani. This 24-year-old Iranian woman had removed her hijab on a woman's only car on the Tehran metro. She was beaten by the police and forced to confess to crimes against morality. Alicia was fired up, but she also felt that she could breathe easily in her secure Taiwanese environment. Wanting this freedom for all people, Alicia wrote her letter to Yasmin to cast a breath of fresh air into her prison cell. The size of our borders cannot restrain the wind of our vision. Alicia, back to you. Light it up. Yes, Vita. We must allow the winds of change to supply oxygen to the flames of eclecticism, energy, and passionate Taiwanese youth. Not for ourselves, but for the international community. We must light up the fires of curiosity and patriotism. We must passionately support each other. Our minds must be oriented towards improving cooperation. We should not be fighting amongst ourselves to be the best, but work together so Taiwan can be the best. 
Your choice, fellow students, is simple. Isolate or help. Fear or change. Earth, water, wind, and fire. Together, we affect elemental change. 谢谢我们第十九队，请回座休息。我们请下一队做准备。好，我们请第二十队上台。计时开始。Good morning, everyone. The British philosopher John Locke first announced three fundamental natural rights: life, liberty, and property. Emphasizing the importance of human rights, however, numerous incidents have occurred due to violation of human rights in the past few years, indicating that the world still has further improvement. Taiwan has been devoted to enhancing human rights domestically and internationally. Today, we are going to further discuss how Taiwan has reflected on two major international events and act as a force for good in advancing universal values. Next, let's welcome Angelina to further discuss an international event related to human rights. Recently, the slogan "Black Lives Matter" in the U.S. has spread across the entire world, concerning the discrimination on the black. After the African American George Floyd was killed by a police officer deliberately because of his skin color. People in the U.S. could not hide their indignation, holding protests and parades in various regions, and emphasizing the importance of equality. Regarding this issue, Taiwan can relate to the U.S. by the fact that our country is composed of people from diverse nations. However, migrant workers, especially from Southeast Asia, were struggling and treated unequally due to different languages and cultures. Their voices were heard. Therefore, the government has been trying to implement laws such as the International Convention on the Protection of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families, and establish institutions to assist foreign workers in adapting to Taiwan. Next, Kevin will introduce another event responding to human rights diplomacy. Since 2019, civil rights activists in Hong Kong have begun to hold the anti-extradition law amendment bill movement, aiming to fight against the vicious law. Res residents advocated that the regulation bothered their nation's freedom on judicial judgments, which was supposed to be taken account of under the present status. Freedom is known as the first dimension of human rights. And the Constitution of Taiwan expressly stipulated freedom as one of the four fundamental rights of human beings. Therefore, Taiwanese people, especially the youth, highly placed the importance of freedom and were devoted to expressing their thoughts through social media such as Facebook and Instagram. They also engaged in establishing the Lenin Walls to convey their dissatisfaction of the law. In addition. Television news and online streaming platforms updated the latest situation of the protest every day, allowing everyone to learn the information firsthand. Moreover, President Tsai issued statements to the people in Hong Kong, revealing Taiwan's value on democracy and the freedom of speech while practicing human rights diplomacy. Next, Cheryl will introduce practical laws and agreements that Taiwan has been committed to enhancing in recent years. Even though Taiwan is not a member of the United Nations, we have been devoted to ensuring that our domestic policies are in line with international norms. The UN has announced several global announcements and agreements on protecting human rights, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. As one of the democratic countries worldwide, we value various fundamental rights, including we value fun values fundamental rights. And framed our enactments adapting to the UN's agreements. 
Therefore, Taiwan has placed several global and has placed several laws into place regarding the aspects of civil and political rights, the rights of physically challenged people, and the rights of children and women. In addition, we invited professors of human rights to examine our written reports for a thorough perspective. Thus, this demonstrates the diligence of Taiwan in human, in human rights protection, hoping that we can create a society without bias and prejudice. Next, Josephine will conclude for us. Through reflecting on the Black Lives Matter issue and movements in Hong Kong, and by discussing domestic policies that Taiwan wishes to align with the international conventions, we can see Taiwan's value on equality and liberty of human rights and our efforts on creating a harmonious environment. The problem of human rights cannot be solved overnight. However, as the saying goes, identifying the problem is halfway to solving the situation. Taiwan is willing to identify and face our problems. Hence, we are confident that we will be able to diminish discrimination and guarantee human rights one day. Thank you. 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 Human rights are one of the most important indicators of democracy. From the annual report on human rights released by the State Department and Freedom House, we can see that the Taiwanese government has made steady progress in improving people's political rights and freedom. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In recent years, human rights diplomacy has played an important role in Taiwan's diplomatic principles. Why does human rights diplomacy seem so crucial for Taiwan? Since the respect of civilized country for human life and human rights values has led the international community to gradually accept the idea that human rights transcend sovereignty. Taiwan must promote human rights diplomacy to integrate into the global community. This diplomacy can not only improve the overall image of Taiwan, but also build friendships between Taiwan and other countries, which in turn helps Taiwan to integrate into the global community. As for how to implement human rights diplomacy, it is widely believed that it should be divided into two parts, the internal and external human rights development. Next, Ding will tell you more about the internal human rights development. Thank you, Linda. First, in terms of domestic human rights development, in recent years, Taiwan has successively implemented laws to enforce major international human rights conventions and has also invited experts to discuss human rights issues such as the abolition of the death penalty. In May 2019, Taiwan became the first country in Asia to recognize marriages between same-sex couples, which demonstrates our independence, leadership, and absolute commitment to all the human rights of Taiwan. Furthermore, the Taiwanese government has also established the National Human Rights Commission to implement the Constitution's protection of the rights of the people. We work hard to deepen the protection of human rights in Taiwan and has also shared our experience with the international community for reference. Next, Julin would like to tell you what we could do to promote human rights diplomacy. Thank you, Dean. On the promotion of human rights diplomacy, we should actively join existing international human rights organizations use participation often leads to better results because it's an integral part of democracy. For example, we can join Youth for Human Rights International, 
Its purpose is to educate young people around the world on the subject of human rights. We can also actively promote human rights in our communities and schools. Participating in international organizations not only allows Taiwan to be more legitimate when promoting human rights diplomacy, but it also avoids negative reviews that may be criticized by some countries as interfering in the internal affairs of certain countries. It is believed that most international human rights organizations are happy to accept aid from Taiwan's youth. Next, Yvonne would like to tell you more about how human rights bring us closer in line with the international community. Thank you, Jolene. In recent years, Taiwan's democratic development has made remarkable achievements and has been widely recognized by countries all over the world. We believe that the country that focuses on human rights is more likely to be in line with the international community. So Taiwan should keep putting human rights first when participating in the international community. Taiwan's democracy is not only fully aligned with the democratic spirit of the developed countries, but also has a high degree of active participation of the whole people. It appears to be so lively and dedicated. We Taiwanese always adhere to the universal values of peace, freedom, democracy, and human rights. The spirit is deeply rooted in the people in Taiwan. As long as we continue to promote human rights diplomacy, we believe one day Taiwan will shine on the world stage. Thank you. 好，谢谢弟兄。二十一队，我们请下一队做准备。我们请第二十二队上台。Human rights in Taiwan has had a checkered history, from the days of the Dutch, Chinese, Japanese colonization, through the white terror years under dictatorship and martial law, to our current situation. Against the odds, Taiwan was transformed by the brave efforts of countless activists into a democracy with huge respect for human rights. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Just this week. Taiwan was listed by the Civic as one of the 42 countries in the world and the only one in Asia to have an open civic space. However, the situation isn't so for many countries around the world, including those involved in the new southbound policy. But what exactly sets Taiwan apart from the countries in the field of human rights? And how can we serve as an example for the others? Taiwan received international recognition on 24th May 2019 when we became the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. Despite pushback from some corners, notably conservative and religious element, the move received widespread public approval at home and applause from overseas. In the months since then, we have seen several couples tying the knot under the new laws and even the first official same-sex marriage in the military in October of this year. Our open attitude towards LGBTQ culture also make global headlines this year because we are the few countries in the position to hold a pride parade on October 31st. Images of the march in Taipei brought joy to people from around the world due to the coronavirus restrictions. Recognizing and protecting the rights of the minority is a vital cornerstone of any human rights movement. And Taiwan is proud to find itself at the forefront of such endeavors. While our record in this area is not perfect, see for example our poor treatment of immigrant fishermen, we can make strides to become a beacon for equality in Asia. A world of safety and equality is, after all, a strong world.
Another area in which Thailand has been making great strides is in digital transparency, namely the open sharing data between the government and the public at large. In many nations around the world, far-right authoritarian are in power and are in some cases gaining strength. One of the hallmarks of such regimes, from Brazil to China, is the tight restrictions which are placed on the data available to the public. It's no coincidence that many of these countries are among the worst hit by COVID-19. On the other hand, the consequences of Taiwan's stand can be seen in our internationally recognized response to coronavirus pandemic. Unlike many other countries, Taiwan's government was quick to make freely available data on infection rates, fatalities, and even the stocks of masks in various pharmacies. These allowed the public in the population to keep up to date with the situation through apps such as Fine, avoiding mass panic that may arise when important information is restricted. These also allowed tender people in the population to contribute, such as through the crowdsourcing, which gave rise to the app for identifying where it was possible to buy a mask. With this action, Taiwan was able to stand as an example on, to other countries on what is undeniably the greatest issue of 2020. An issue closely related to digital transparency is that of freedom of the press. In the decades since shaking off the sheer cost of martial law, Taiwan has become an open democracy which enjoys a great many freedoms, and we hold the freedoms dearly. In an age of deeply polarized opinions and misinformation, often exacerbated by phenomena such as social media, it's vital to have a working press in which the free dissemination of news and ideas is possible. Again, this is often not the case in authoritarian countries. We personally take great pride in the fact that the organization, Reporters Without Borders, the most renowned authority on this matter, ranks Taiwan as 43rd in the Press Freedom Index. Only South Korea ranked higher than us at the number 42 in the Asian region, with Japan at 66 being the only other Asian nation to make the top 100. As a result of our sustained performance in this field, Reporters Without Borders chose Taipei as the site of their first Asian bureau in 2017. With such a strong reputation, Taiwan can without, can without doubt encourage and inspire all neighboring countries to value media freedom. Despite our problematic beginnings and the work we still have to do in some areas, you can see that Taiwan is making headway in the field of human rights. Our work on LGBTQ equality, digital transparency, and press freedom are just a few of the ways in which we can set an example for the others. By expressing commitments towards equality, freedom, and friendship, we hope that Taiwan of the future is one of which we can all be proud. Human rights a hope to thrive. Thank you. The only way to achieve global peace is through the full realization of human rights in all corners of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Taiwan has a vibrant and inclusive democracy which respects human rights and values personal freedom. Freedom House, an organization which evaluates and ranks countries in terms of their human rights and personal freedom, has ranked Taiwan as the most free in Asia for its both political freedoms and civil liberties. It's easy for young people in Taiwan to take this for granted. After all, isn't this a nation is supposed to function? Unfortunately, that means that Taiwan is also surrounded by nations in the region which are less free, some of which are repressive, authoritarian states. But Taiwanese care about their human rights and human rights of others and have been working hard both at home and abroad, promoting our ideals with human rights diplomacy, helping others achieve the freedom and dignity that respect for human rights brings. Next, Amy will tell you more. Thank you, Willie. Some of Taiwan's human rights diplomacy takes place here, at home. Taiwan serves as a model for countries in Asia for how human rights can be protected and just as importantly. 
how governments open up and can have a peaceful transition from repressive autocracy to liberal democracy. In other words, Taiwan promotes human rights abroad by protecting human rights at home. Taiwan did not collapse into chaos when martial laws ended, nor did it when we legalized same-sex marriage or when we hold elections. In fact, we are thriving. This in itself is a form of passive diplomacy, not pushing other countries, but leading. And as other nations make decisions about their own future with regards to human rights and freedoms, we are here to show their value. Recently, Taiwan implemented the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Even though we are not a member at the, U at the UN, we are here to show their value. Next, Emily will tell you more. Thank you, Amy. Taiwan does not have many official diplomatic relationships to promote human rights. In fact, the more we promote them, the more pressure there is to isolate us. In light of this, another aspect of Taiwan's human rights diplomacy is its engagement with NGOs and activist groups. Not all countries respect freedom of expression like Taiwan does, and it can be difficult for those groups and individuals to find a safe place to promote dialogue and public awareness. Recently, Taipei hosted the Oslo Freedom Forum, a place for human rights advocates from all over the world to promote religious freedom and individual rights. More and more, people are looking to Taiwan as a free and human rights sanctuary. Here is Anthony with more. Thank you, Emily. During the current COVID-19 crisis, Taiwan took another big diplomatic step. One way unconditional assistance to countries suffering from a lack of resources to prevent coronavirus infection. This demonstrates to the world that we can help and we care about the well-being of others. This kind of diplomatic self-power shows that we can share our values without conflict. However, promoting human rights diplomacy isn't easy, and it isn't always safe. Advocates for a more fair world often face persecution whether it be activists from Hong Kong, outspoken Uyghurs, or Taiwanese abroad like Li Mingzhou, people who push for human rights, or sometimes just people who have opinions can end up in jail or worse. More and more, the region looks to Taiwan as a beacon and a sanctuary. That is why Taiwan's human rights diplomacy is so important. So that together with other governments and brave individuals, we can defend our humanity and fight for a more just, free, and decent world. Thank you. 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 Thank Good morning, all honorable judges, distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen. We are honored to deliver a speech to you here on this stage today. We are going to talk about the human rights diplomacy. First of all, let me ask, what is the human rights diplomacy and what has Taiwan achieved in this area? Well, let me give you a few examples, Iris. Taiwan's medical strong suit has proven itself through this year. After we started the one country, one center policy, there have been about 31,000 people come to Taiwan for better medical treatment. Sounds amazing, right? It is amazing, Jeremy. Taiwan is also a friendly place to Muslim people. Visitors can find Muslim prayer rooms available in many transportation centers and tourist sites. They can also easily find halal recognized restaurants everywhere in Taiwan. Definitely, Joyce. Speaking of human rights diplomacy, it's necessary for us to talk about the status quo of Taiwan's human rights. Later on, 
We'll have Iris and Jeremy to tell us more about this topic, and Joyce will tell us how we can strengthen the diplomacy of human rights, and I will deliver our conclusions. Thanks, Astro. Do you know that somewhere in this world, there are people still living below the poverty line? Do you know that there are children cannot go to school while we are having higher education? Do you know that there are people cannot express their true feeling publicly? Every time when I think of the above problem, I feel that I'm lucky to be born in Taiwan. Apart from that, Taiwan boasts a wide variety of population composition, including Hakka community, Aboriginals, and even immigrants from Southeast Asia. It has made Taiwan become, it has made Taiwan more tolerant to individual differences and our culture has become more inclusive. Later on, we'll have Jeremy to tell us what has Taiwan achieved and what else we can do. Thanks, Iris. I agree with what you just said. Yet here I would like to share with you some fabulous facts. In May 2019, Taiwan became the first Asian country to legalize the same-sex marriage. In the same year, December, Taiwan passed the anti infiltration Act to stop the circulation of election-related disinformation. That was why Taiwan rated as number two free nations in Asia by Freedom House. However, our fight for human rights is not over yet. There is still room left for our improvements. And this year, Taiwan joined the third human rights consultation with the EU. By joining this kind of international workshop, Taiwan can keep up with the latest type of human rights. Next, that's our choice to tell us more about the human rights diplomacy. Thanks, Jeremy. This year, the Taiwan Human Rights Journal introduces the idea, the Taiwan model of human rights, and specifies the three following features. The first one is, governments and NGOs will formulate the concern laws and conduct examinations through international procedures. The second is, all the above laws will follow UN treaties, but adjust to local needs. Last but not least, public and private sectors alike are all encouraged to engage in the formulation and practice of laws concern human rights. In addition to following all the above principles, we can take more action in promoting human rights. From the domestic angle, we can incorporate humanitarian, we can incorporate human rights education into high school curriculum to strengthen children's awareness. From the international angle, we can make, Taiwan can make sure, from the, from the international angle, Taiwan can make sure the asylums and humanitarian aid are suitable to the needs of refugees such as Rohingya and Syrian people. Next, let's welcome Esther to give us a conclusion. Thanks, Joyce. Briefly speaking, from Iris and Jeremy's story, we can see what Taiwan has achieved so far in the aspect of human rights. Joyce has also mentioned of what else we can do to strengthen the diplomacy of human rights. Thinking of the above issue, I think that we should all feel lucky that we're born in Taiwan so that we can get to enjoy the prevalence of education, convenience on healthcare, and diversity choices of food. While there's somewhere out in the world that there are teenagers who can't access to any of the privileges we have. Life's most urgent and persistent question is, what can we do for others? Though Taiwan may be rejected outside the WHA door and other UN events for now, we shall continue to work on the greater good of humanity and the better future of our country. Thank, Thank you. you. 好，谢谢我们第二十四队的表现，也请先回座休息。好，以上是我们第一阶段的团体英语的即席演讲的比赛啊，到此结束了。我想很快的，大家看到我们二十四组的同学们呢，在我们的外交小尖兵的决赛里面呢，可以说在很短的时间内哦，知道题目以后呢，就做了很棒的准备哦。大家都有很丰富的一些内容，而且呢，这个演讲的这个台风呢，也活力十足啊。那发音呢，也非常充满了精神呢、啊，是不是给自己一个热情的掌声好吗？
好，接下来呢，我们下一阶段会是我们的意志问塔的比赛了。那在这个阶段呢，我们必须要考考我们的外交小尖兵们呢、啊，就是你们在最短的时间内要选出正确的答案呢、啊。那考考你们的团队的这个精神、团队的这个默契啊，而且呢，还有你们对这个国际事务的理解的能力哦、啊。大家有信心吗？大家有信心吗？好的，我们休息一下，待会马上回来。好，在我们进行意志问答比赛之前呢，我们就刚刚的这个团体英语的呃即席演讲啊，来做一个讲评呢。我们请到我们评审老师为各位同学呢，就刚刚大家的英文的发音呐、啊，还有英文的使用上，还有包括了这是我们的演讲内容，还有你整体的表现跟台风啊，做一个讲评。同学们准备好了吗？好，我们首先要欢迎到是我们的国立成功大学外国语。语文学系陈安纯教授来为我们做这个英文的使用跟发音上讲评，欢迎。好，各位同学，大家好，今天呢。看看到大家非常精彩的表现，那我就发音的部分给大家一些我我自己看到的状况，还有还有建议哈，呃，就是特别是发音上，我们真的是觉得呃 ，it's not what you say but how you say it， 嗯、um, ，所以我觉得有些同学他呃可能。太太过于执着要把所有的呃内容表达完，以至于它的速度上面很快，然后很多文文字呢都是滚过去的。好，然后再加上一些好就是 robotic rhythm， 好像好像机器人一样的的的念法，这样子好像没有办法抓住大家的注意力，所以宁可用不同的声调、不同的速度来抓住大家的注意力会比较好。那呃。所以，我现在是不是可以举几个例子说明啊？就是包括发音啊，还有一些文字的用法。像我刚才听到有一组同学，他用了一个很棒的用法，他说 ：“With without further ado， 是 ado 不是 ado， right？ Ado 的意思是 that I would not want to spend more time. I would not waste more time. But when you say without further ado， that means I would not waste more effort. 哎，它是不一样的。时间，你要你不要再花更多的时间，跟你不要再花更多的努力，那是不一样的。那所以在发音上要注意一下。呃，其他的像嗯、呃、，controversial 啊，或者是 universal 这种发音，我刚才听到有人念成 universal， 还还有 universal。<笑>好，这都呃要请大家再更注意一下。好、um,。还有像比如说已经证实的呃 proven fact， 哎、right? ，不是 proved fact。好，那像其他的，比如说 education， 那你念成 education， 或者是像嗯，这是由台湾来创作的，或者是 founded， 哎、right? ，founded by Taiwan 是台湾呃怎么说把它做出来的，而不是 founded。founded 这边是台湾出钱的，对不对？ So founded by Taiwan or founded by Taiwan is different. 好，其他的就差不多就这样了。就像比如说你在讲 legislative 的话，你就不能滚过去说 legislative， right？ 或者是 win win situation， 那是什么呢？ Is win win， right？ 要那个音要到位啊。还有 bilateral， 大家都会说双边的这个字，那你念说你念成呃 bilateral， 那就不对了。好，我再讲下去，大家快要烦死了。我们我们今天就就讲到这里，那谢谢主持人，谢谢,谢,谢大家，今天都非常好。谢谢我们的教授，谢谢。好，在英语的能力及发音部分呢，我觉得同学们应该可以感受到，我觉得大家呢都是在这个时间的压力之下。要把要很快的把自己的内容把它讲出来，所以难免呢会有一些吃字，而且呢面对了舞台啊、灯光啊、摄影机啊，就会有点紧张，嘴巴就会比较硬一点了。所以本来在家里发音发的非常 perfect， 到这边就变 perfect 啊，那就跟不太一样了。不过这没有关系啊，大家可以继续努力，加油，好不好？接下来我们要欢迎国立台湾师范大学英国语言学系的 Mary Goodwin Professor， 来 ，Please welcome。针对大家有关内容的部分来做个讲评。Thank you very much. 
As ever, uh, classmates and colleagues, I'm very honored to be here again this year. I am deeply impressed, as ever, by Taiwan students' ability. And when I try to compare it with American students that I know in high school, there's no, absolutely no comparison. So you, are do, you should be very, very proud of yourselves. You should be proud of the teachers and the coaches who bring you to this level. And this year's questions, I notice, are especially timely. We're talking about Taiwan's response to COVID, how it set a model for the, for the world, and also in terms of human rights, human rights abuses, and using human rights as a diplomatic strategy is a most timely subject. And I congratulate the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for coming up with these great uh, topics. Now, today I want to give you a few pointers on how to uh, impress the judges and some things you might want to avoid when you are making your speeches. The first one, I'll start with the negative. I'll start with the avoid, <laughs> avoid list. First thing is, Avoid definitions that are too long. If you define human rights and you spend minutes and minutes telling us something that we could find in Wikipedia or in the dictionary, it's a waste of your time. What you should do is, is connect immediately with Taiwan's um, efforts to promote diplomacy. So don't waste your time. Second thing you should not do is simply give us too many facts without some kind of narrative structure to hold them together. One of my colleagues especially pointed this out, that too many facts by themselves, again, mean nothing to us without some kind of a connection, without some kind of a story. And finally, I noticed that a lot of, a lot of students spend a lot of time blaming other countries for human rights abuses. Thank you, you didn't blame America. I think I could stand here and blame America for many <laughs> human rights abuses. Mostly you focused on China and some other places. Uh, although everything you say is true and brave, I don't think that that furthers your point of what Taiwan can do. So just blaming other countries doesn't really help you make your point. Now, in terms of what you should do, First thing you should do is focus and be specific. I was very impressed by one team, by many teams, but by one team who talked about Taiwan's efforts in South Asia to help women in terms of education and health concerns. I was very impressed by that speech. They also mentioned one of my heroes at the end, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so I paid a special attention to that speech. Second thing you should do um, that some of your groups really did very well was focus on internal and external human rights um, advances in Taiwan, which means not just preaching to other countries about what they should do, but uh, focusing on Taiwan and the work that needs to be done, uh, for, for example, with um, migrant workers, with immigrants in Taiwan. Um, the third thing I think you should, uh, that people did very well was to mention any kind of United Nations human rights efforts, Human Rights Day, and so on, to demonstrate to the judges that you're aware of current events, of things that are happening in the world, and uh, then finally, to have a good conclusion, a good kind of narrative uh, tie-up that connects all of your points very well. So again, um, a story that has a narrative structure rather than just random facts, and to listen to all of the other teachers we have here who give you some very good advice about other aspects of your performance. So congratulations, you did a fine job again. 再一次我们谢谢我们的Professor Goodwin,好,我想我们刚刚这个Professor讲的很清楚了,其实大家在做这个内容的时候呢,有很多给挑选的,有正面的,有比较负面的,那最重要的是,我们是喜欢听故事的动物,我刚刚在台下听的时候
，外交上呢，我们应该要怎么样有一些突破。那么在台风的部分呢，我想应该呃不需要讲太多，因为就是大家在演讲的时候呢，有时候就是自然是最好的。所以如果你能够呃，就是用这个非非常自然的这个肢体语言，然后但就可以搭配一些所谓的手势，这样子应该就够了。那么有一些同学呢，他们可能会有一些走位啊，或者是说哎 Q 另外一个同学上来呀、啊，我觉得这都很有创意。不过就是说在这个过程当中啊，有时候呢他出错的几率。也会相对比较高一点点，所以呢，嗯，就是呃，对一个演讲来讲，因为现在演讲不像以前一样，就是它有一种呃很强大的表演的性质，必须要在那个地方。现在我们讲求就是自然最好，所以呢，呃，这一点呢，给同学们做一个参考。那么在这个外交的部分呢，我想呃，听了这么多的演讲，其实大概可以归纳出啊，大部分的。内容大概就是一个 A B C。第一个呢，可能就是先 define 一下什么是 human rights。但是 human rights 有很多种，那有一些同学可能放在呃强调部分呢是 p e r i c a l rights。那有一些同学呢可能放的就是 welfare 或是 economic rights， 这些都可以。那么第二个部分呢，可能同学就开始去呃讲一下台湾过去的在这两个 rights 的一些成就。那么最后呢，可能大家就。呃，进入一个就是，呃，我们可以帮忙啊，然后举一些例子说，台湾现在已经帮哪些忙，但是呢，这毕竟是一个呃，想要呃给我们的外交部一些呃点子的地方啊，所以呢，外交部办理这个活动，就是希望大家可以发挥创意，然后跟他们讲说，我们已经做这些东西，那么从你们这些年轻世代角度来讲，还可以做什么？那么在这一部分呢，我想。基本上，呃，我们非常少听到就是有这个创意的建议啦。那这一点我是觉得比较可惜一点点的。那么还有就是说，今天我们的呃，今天呃，今年我们的主题呢是这个南向博感情。那么你想要博是什么感情呢？在这里面呢，有一些同学呃提到台湾呢呃非常呃就是引以为傲的，例如说这个 LGBT movement。呃，在台湾呢，当然做得很好。但是你要知道，是说今天我们讲的是南向国家，南向国家不管是东南亚国家或是南亚国家，基本上它的政治文化，还有就是它的社会文化是比较保守的。所以呢，在台湾，我们在面向一个所谓的呃国际主呃国际就是 international community 的时候，我们可以对欧美国家说，哎，我们跟你们一样，我我们事实上呢也尊重多元。但是呢，这些国家相对比较保守的国家，你在这个地方讲 same sex marriage， 可能就有一点点，可能会触犯当地的一些文化，这个可能要注意一点点。所以，如果站在外交部的角度来讲，虽然我们很骄傲，但是是不是应该要把这个主题做一个 promote？ 当成这个所谓的 human rights diplomacy， 可能需要再想一下。另外，对于这个 political repression， 当然就是说我们自己面对一些威胁，所以我们很在乎这个议题。但是从外交的角度来看，如果在东南亚国家或是南亚国家，他们这么尊重、呃保护自己国家的这个内政的情况底下，呃，从这个国家的呃这个角色去 promote 这样子的 human rights， 是不是适合？那么，如果你真的是这样做的话，是不是反而正在伤害我们自己的外交？我们还没交到朋友，就已经先把朋友得罪掉了。所以，呃，我在想说，大家在讨论这些内容的时候，还是要看一下你的 target 是谁，还有你的主题究竟是什么，然后把这个内容呢，做一个呃，就是一个比较。呃，切合符合当地状况的一个内容上的调整，我想会是比较合适一点点的。那以上就是我的建议，谢谢。谢谢，谢谢我们的教授。<笑>我想同学们应该都听进去了，因为其实在现场当然是我们的总决赛，但是外交小尖兵呢、啊，刚刚教授讲的很重点，重点是我们是要博感情，所以在博感情这一段呢，我想这个教授给大家一个非常棒的建议了。因为每个地方的这个人呃人文的文化都不一样，大家所介意的事情都不一样，以后大家多注意一点了。好，接下来我们来欢迎我们的世新呃，欢迎我们的世新大学英语学系的教授李正清教授，掌声欢迎。Thank you very much. Well, dear contestants, I'm here to say congratulations to all of you. For successfully completing the extremely challenging contest of、uh, impromptu speaking, this is almost an mission impossible. But all of you 
have successfully converted the impossible mission into a mission accomplished. Shall we give a big hand to all of yourself for doing all of this? Well, as a matter of fact, all of you should be proud of yourself for one reason. You have been selected nationwide from 112 teams to be over here. Of course, supported by your good teachers, your parents, and in a good environment. And also, what I'm going to do to add after our colleagues' comment and in the advice to all of you, I have two points, three points to share with you. I'm going to ask you first, what are you going to do beyond this successful competition? What's the next step we are going to do? So what I'm going to say, I would like to give you some suggestions so that you can continue to further empower your English skills for two purposes. First, academic learning in a university or colleges, home or abroad. And the two, number two, career development in the future, particularly in the international context. We are living in a global world, and all of you are not going to be confined only in Taiwan. They are going to go overseas, like our MC, traveling from all over the world, find a good job, and you have to keep going, never stop over here. So for that purposes, beyond our professor's comment, and suggestion, one of a kind of suggestion, I'm going to give you three suggestions. First, read extensively and intensively so that you can learn some more vocabulary, style, expression, good patterns, good sentences, and good knowledge. This morning, I heard all of you giving examples, and I found that all the examples you gave today seem to me are so stereotype, champion elite. There are no creative internationally recognized a brand new example exists in the whole world today. Almost them are the same. And it means that your reading is limited. So be sure after this uh, uh, competition, go home and read extensively and uh, intensively so that you can pick up good vocabulary. Vocabulary, good example like pandemic, COVID-19, in addition to fake news, there's a better word for than fake news, and that's disinformation. Have you heard that? The beautiful word, talent development, and a global competition, global diplomacy, and a human right in a global context. Secondly, when you give an example, have you ever heard the so-called human diplomacy existing in the military in, in Europe. Have you ever heard that German leader, Anger, uh, uh, Merkel, Prime Minister Merkel, accepted all of the refugees from Syria, taking good care of, of, of all of them in Germany, providing them good job, good education, good life, and that's the typical human rights, and also that's a human diplomacy. I'm sorry that nobody heard about or mentioned any kind of specific cases beyond Taiwan like that in Europe, in Latin America, or even otherwhere in South Asia. So be sure to read extensively and intensively with the, with the support of your teachers. Finally, speaking is important, but how about the other inner skills? How about writing? Your next step is writing for competition, writing for communication internationally. So be sure to make use of what you learn from reading and speaking and convert them into good writing. So far in your school, you can always write message or email to your teachers, to your friends, to your parents in English, short English. A constant practice like this 
can empower you to be not only a good speaker of English, a good reader, but particularly a good writer. Eventually, when I'm going to work to the professional market, home or abroad, you will have to write efficiently for communication, not just speaking like this one. You have all, all of you have memorized a lot of speeches, prepared and also supported by your teachers. But the next step is read voluntarily by yourself to empower your skill of reading, listening, speaking, writing, and even translation and public speaking. I wish all of you good luck, good luck in the future. And I'm sure based on this success of a competition of impromptu speech, you are going to be the winner. All of you are going to be somebody in the future for our country, for Taiwan, as well as for all of the world. Congratulations and keep working hard. Thank you. Thank you. 大家不知道有没有感受到这充满热情的一个演讲，大家每一字每一句都听得非常清楚啊。虽然说我们的教授讲的非常的慢，而且呢，你会注意到说他每一个字你都听得非常的准确，而听完你会记得很清楚。教授